are here today at Maxton Farm in South Ayrshire to speak to David Whiteford about how he is incorporating multi-species swords into his grazing strategy. Multi-species swords are those that contain a standard grass such as ryegrass and clover but with a third element being um, herbaceous species such as chicory and plantain. Many of these species uh, require additional management considerations uh, which we're going to speak to David about. But provide the opportunity to achieve high levels of livestock performance, high yields of forage from reduced fertiliser inputs and the deep tap roots of some herb species can provide improved resilience during drought conditions whilst others are known to have anthelmintic properties. The, there's 17 and a half acres in that field. Um, last year it was in kale. Before that it was just, uh, it was always been a silage field. But we wanted to try this mix in it. So it was 74% uh, perennial uh, ryegrasses, intermediate and late heading for good spring growth. But it wouldn't shoot too quickly. High, high sugar abergrasses, 6% white clover, fixing isogen, 8% timothy, um, which is insurance policy as for growth in wet conditions and good persistency. Uh, 6% Puna chicory and 6% tonic plantain. Both the chicory and plantain have excellent feed values, high, di high digestibility and palatability, high mineral content, and hopefully it will improve in stock performance. We, April was well, a tremendous month here this year. Um, we were tempted to sow it in April, but uh, we left it, just in case it was frost, we left it to 15th of May. Um, we ploughed it, we got two tonne of lime, power harrowed it twice, um, land levelled it, um, rolled it, sowed it, rolled it again, and then it got 100 bit of uh, sweet grass fertiliser from Origin. And that was, that was it. Because of the, the herbs in the mixture, we, we couldn't use chemical sprays, so we had to just use uh, mechanical methods of popping, uh, which we've done in the past before. A lot of red shank, maybe in the middle of June, I think it was. We, uh, the 20th of June, we run the topper over it, and. Cut the cut the um, the red shank out, and and then we we'll, no, ten days, and then we we put a lot of sheep in and kind of graze it down like a bit, and then took sheep took sheep out it. And that was the only weed control we used. We've been the, the first year and just been sown in May. We 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 never grazed it till about seventeenth of July. Once we spent the first of the um. The cross shells, lambs, um, so we spent them on to it into one of the paddocks. Was, was split into four paddocks, so we just uh, we just finished finish these lambs and rotational graze them around the paddocks. It was a bit, uh, I think we were 220, and then just we, we drew the lambs out and then just added more lambs to it, um, just throughout the the rest of the summer and into the back end. Yeah, this field performed well with finishing lambs and we, I think there have been 400 and 450 lambs went out through and we finished them off it in, from mid-July through into, well, now, which is uh, mid-November, there's still some on it yet, so. We did, had decided to regress rotational graze because the chicory and plantain can't stand being eaten right down to the bone all the time. So it performs so much better, um, the chicory and plantain, if it's rested and not eaten. Uh, it was a, we, we put these, the lambs in when it was about 3,000 kilos of dry mark per hectare, and we were taking it down to about 12 to 1,400, um, and then moving them on. Once it, once it started moving through the gates, you just leave the gate open in the morning and then if you're looking them at night again, they, they would roll through into the next paddock. 
So it was a great setup. The we we rested Paul between three weeks, three to four weeks, I think, for each each paddock. Um, and that gave us probably the best performance. We'll, we're graze it maybe um, the the rest of the lamb should be finished in a couple of weeks' time, and then we'll. we'll there's still been great growth the last couple of weeks. Probably put the ears in it to eat, eat it clean, not be too sore on it, um, and then leave it probably for more no graze it after Christmas, I don't think. And that'll be up to the spring. And we'll um, we usually put your ear on in February, March time if the ground can take us, and um, hopefully we'll lamb on it at the end of March. This year we plan to lamb the triplets in this field and leave the triplets with their, with their mothers um, and rotational graze them around these paddocks instead of lifting a lamb. It will save us a bit of time and hopefully the ewes and lambs will perform uh, fine on this on that system. And if we put hogs and hogs and singles on it just to We've not got enough triplets to, to fill up to fill the field. Um, we'll give them the best the best chance. That's what we're, and then we'll just spend lambs on to the spending time and just keep rotational grazing it all out through the year. We'll not need to put any um, fertilizer on it for the rest of the year. Um, but it's just going to be huge savings going forward, and we should still have the same performance, um, a probably better performance. Um, but in that particular field, it's quite exciting. For more information, check out the Farm Advisory website or contact the helpline.